Today, we're setting up health checks on our home media server. We're gonna do this using Home Assistant. At the moment, I'm running all of these different services on my home media server, all of this for media management, but I've also got Portainer for container management and Nextcloud for file sync and transfer between devices. And the problem is, when one of these services goes down, I often don't know about it. It's not until I go to put my feet up, relax, want to unwind, and then I find out that my media streaming service is not working. That really frustrates me, so we are going to fix that. In this video, we're going to set up health checks for each of these services. We're then going to create an automation which will automatically send you a notification to your mobile phone when one of those services goes down. So let's jump into it. I'm gonna start by remote desktoping into my home media server, which is currently running on a Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna use Tiger VNC to do that. We're gonna open up a terminal window and go to the folder location that you installed Home Assistant on. For me, that is the Home Assistant folder here. You then wanna go into your config folder and within here, we have a very important file, which is called configuration.yaml. We wanna go ahead and open that file up for editing. So I'm just gonna do sudo nano config.yaml. That opens it up so that we can edit the file. We're now going to define those health checks. Like anything in Home Assistant, there are so many different ways that you can actually achieve the outcome we're after. The first is using rest commands like this. The only trouble when I was experimenting with this is it doesn't work for HTTPS endpoints where you don't have SSL certificates set up correctly, which I don't. An alternative for that is shell commands like this where you just curl the endpoint and ignore the SSL errors. However, both these ways have issues when you try to tie it into automations. So we're going to use an even better way with something called binary sensors. I'll put a link down below to the official documentation for you. Actually, I'll also link my entire configuration file and automations file for you guys in my GitHub down below as well. So you can just copy and paste. We want to type in binary underscore sensor. We're going to give it a list of all the endpoints we want to hit. So the first thing we need is platform. This is going to be a rest endpoint. We're then going to give it a name. For me, I'm going to start with my Jellyfin health check. The names you put here will appear in your dashboard in Home Assistant, so make sure you give it something that kind of makes sense. We're then going to define the endpoint that we want to hit. The method, so we just want to do a simple get request. And finally, you want to specify what they call a value template. And this essentially is what is the expected output of that get request that you send. In our particular case, this endpoint specifically should return healthy. So our value template will look something like this where the value is equal to healthy. If that is true, it will pass as successful, otherwise it will return unsuccessful. One last field, we also wanna say the scan interval, so this is how often we wanna scan. This means every 60 seconds, we're going to ping that endpoint. I'm going to do the same for my sonar endpoint. Over here we can see we're doing a get request to this particular endpoint. With everything else that I have, there are specific API endpoints that I can hit, but I have to authenticate and I just can't be bothered with the extra config. So what we can do is we can say, make a get request to this endpoint, which is just your standard login page. And in our value template, if anything other than nothing is returned, that generally means the service is up and running, so pass it. I did a bit of testing around this and it seems to work quite well. To speed things up, I'm just gonna paste the entire contents of every single health check that I want to do. So it kind of looks like this. Now there are two things I need to mention to you guys. The first is I was having quite a lot of trouble with my Qubit Torrent uh, health check. For some reason, when I use the DNS name or the local IP address, it just wasn't working. I had to use localhost on that particular server. 
My setup is also a bit weird where I'm using port 8081 instead of the standard 8080 port. So if you run into issues, using localhost may help you guys out. And the second thing to note is if you're using HTTPS on some of your endpoints, like I know Portainer and Nextcloud both do, at the moment I'm using self-signed certs and it's not configured correctly. Whenever I go to these pages, I get connection is not secure, I get SSL issues. So what you can do is disable that verify SSL flag and you're good to go. We're gonna go ahead and hit Control X to exit out of the file, hit Y to save it and enter. We now want to open up Home Assistant, head over to Developer Tools, click Check Configuration. You should see this message. If you do, that means everything's correct and you can go ahead and click Restart. Now, if you don't see that message, it will tell you exactly where the error is in your file so you can go ahead and clean that up. We'll now give that a minute to start back up again. Okay, it looks like it's up and running. If we head to the overview page, we'll now see that we've got this binary sensor tab. With all of the health checks that we defined up and running, you'll see the current status as on. Most of these services are running in containers, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and pause a couple and we should see these switch from on to either off or unavailable. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Portainer, which I use to manage my containers. It just makes things nice and easy. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pause our Bazaar container. Go ahead and click pause. We'll now give it a minute because that scan interval is every 60 seconds. It will take a minute to reflect in our dashboard. And there you go, we can now see the status is unavailable. Now onto the second part. When that status changes from on to off, I wanna get a mobile notification so that I know something's wrong and that I need to go in and fix things. Let me just quickly resume that container. Okay, now onto automations. For the automation section, we are going to do this manually through the GUI. We're gonna head over to settings, click on automations, create new automation, we're going to go ahead and start with the triggers, so click on the Add Trigger button. We want Entity, and we want to click on State. We're going to search for our health check, so we're going to start with Bizarre. We're going to say when it goes from the on state to any other state, off, unavailable, unknown, that's when we want to trigger. I only want to be notified when it goes from working to not working. You'll see that there's also another entity flag here. This is like an or statement, so we can define every single entity that we care about. I'm simply going to rinse and repeat for sonar, radar, jellyfin, every single service. This is what it looks like when it's all done, so if any single one of these goes from on to off, it'll trigger the automation. We can also put a time delay in, so we can say, maybe we don't want it to trigger straight away, we want it to be offline for a period of five to 10 minutes before we trigger that notification. This will give it a chance to fix things up by itself before requiring you to jump in and take a look. Because I'm making the video and I wanna test it instantly, I'm gonna leave it as is, but it might be a good idea to put a value of say five minutes in there. Now finally, we want to do the action. So we're going to click this add action button and we want to search for notification and I'm going to click notification to my mobile phone. If you don't have this option available you may need to download and install the Home Assistant app onto your phone and allow notifications into it. Because I've already done that setup previously that's why this automatically appears for me. Now for this particular section, we are going to have to click this little menu and click on edit in YAML. And we are going to replace the data field with this code block. Basically, this is going to be the notification that gets pushed to our mobile phone. We have given it a title. I've called it Raspberry Pi so I know where it has originated from. You can call it home media server or whatever name you want to give it. 
and the message, which will be the contents of that notification, it is going to take the trigger to state friendly name, which is this name here. So when a particular health check fails, the end message that we will get is something like Nextcloud health check failed which is perfect because it tells us the exact service that we need to go in and troubleshoot on. Go ahead and save your automation, give it a name. I'm gonna call it health checks. I just realized one of the names I gave my sensors doesn't follow the naming convention, so I'm going to quickly fix that up. If we go back into our configuration file, I'm going to update that name, exit out and save. Give it a quick reboot. Reload the page and it's all fixed. Now, because I changed that name, I just want to verify that my automations has picked that up. So if I head back to my health checks, the name has kind of changed slightly, so I'm gonna see if it'll pick up. Yep, there we go. I'm just gonna update that and hit save. Moment of truth. So we're gonna head back to Portana, and again, we're gonna pause just a random container. That'll turn it off, the health check should fail, and I should get a mobile notification. Okay, it's gone unhealthy in the dashboard. I just heard a ping. And there we have our notification. I'm gonna quickly pause a couple more containers and I'll give it another minute to trigger. I just wanna see what it looks like when you have multiple notifications come through at the same time. Oh, that's cool. You get the timestamp, the individual service and an individual notification when multiple services go down around the same time. That's really nice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and quickly start up my containers again so everything is up and running. Just gonna hit resume. Now when anything breaks, we'll get that push notification on our phone, which is pretty cool. Some interesting things which may help you guys when I was doing the research to film this video. I actually found that ChatGPT came in handy when it came to finding some of the syntax involved around setting up these sensors. So if you ever find yourself struggling with some of the syntax, especially around the Home Assistant setup, I definitely recommend checking ChatGPT out in addition to the documentation. I've found it gets you kind of 80% of the way there, but it does still kind of lie to you. Like when I was using those RESTful binary sensors, it told me that you couldn't bypass the SSL verification, which when I then went onto the official documentation, found out that was a lie. I've just found it helps sped up the process, especially around these configuration files where you're going across all these different documentations and reading forum posts. It just helps to speed the process up. So that's my handy tip for you guys. So I do have one quick question before we wrap this up. And that is, has anyone come across voice AI integration into Home Assistant? What I would like to do is be able to talk to Home Assistant and say, hey, what's the status of my home media server? Or can you turn my lights on and off? I'm really looking to add voice control functionality and AI integration somehow. I haven't figured it out yet, but if somebody already knows the answer to that, let me know and we can explore it together. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.